take any personal computer, desktop or laptop, open it up, and the chances are inside you'll find one of these. Put it back together, switch it on, and the chances are you'll find this running on it. But why are they both largely absent from these? Have these two technology giants failed to adapt to the new world? History tells us that no matter who rules the world, if they fail to adapt, they die out. If the environment changes, it is a case of evolve or be replaced by newer, more nimble creatures, more suited to the changing conditions. 65 million years on, computers are evolving from mains-powered desktop leviathans into sleek, nimble, portable machines which we take with us. They can store all our media, connect to the net and run high-end applications, yet they're powered by tiny batteries. Inside these new creatures, not Intel, which has so far not produced a chip that's power-efficient enough to run a smartphone. Instead, you'll find chips based on designs from Cambridge-based ARM. And on screen, a rich mix of ecosystems from Apple, Google, RIM, and, yes, Microsoft's new Windows Phone OS, but not full PC Windows, which can only run on chips based on Intel designs. And that's bad news for two Goliaths who have enjoyed a symbiotic relationship for decades, but who are now finding that the world they've ruled for so long is changing. And in order to avoid extinction in the mobile age, it seems both are losing faith in each other. Just last week, Intel officially announced an even lower power version of its netbook Atom chip called Oak Trail, designed specifically for tablets. And this week, it said that most of those devices would be running not Windows, but Android. And in a move that critics say is a vote of no confidence in Intel, Microsoft has announced that the next version of Windows, expected in 2012, will be rewritten to run on ARM as well as Intel chips. Does this mean we'll soon see the world's most popular operating system running on small screen devices? And where does it leave the world's largest chip maker? Well, these are the questions I've been putting to the bosses of the biggest companies in technology. To facilitate more innovation in form factor, because you can do different things with ARM and Intel and system on chip, where literally you can put a whole PC on a, on a little card that big, or a whole phone. I mean, the um, amount of miniaturization that we're going to see and, and low battery and low power is amazing. And we're not going to be uh, out of the game on any processors or in any way. Uh, I, I'm not terribly worried. Uh, I think people will want high performance. They'll want compatibility. They want backwards compatibility with everything that's ever been written, with all the printer drivers and, and mouse drivers that are out there. Is it a sign that Intel really needs to get the low power mobile chipset that will work on tablets and phones. Well, we're already there. It's there today. It's not a chip issue. Our chips are as low power as anyone and much higher performance. Paul Ottolini has told me that his chips are just as low power as yours. Do you mm. agree? It hasn't come to market yet. Uh, and um, you know, obviously Intel, uh, you know, they've spent the last 25 years targeting something that, that isn't low power. So obviously when they turn their efforts to target low power, they're going to make some progress. Um, the reality for us, however, is that we've spent the last 20 years targeting low power. We start from a long way ahead. With the increasing popularity of decent-sized touchscreen tablets, the full version of Windows may seem like a logical choice of operating system to put on them. After all, it's powerful, made for large screens, and there's an enormous back catalogue of software already written for it. And that's an advantage that Microsoft has been keen to stress, that all your existing Windows software would run on a new device powered by ARM and running the next version of Windows. But is it really such a good thing? Even if you could use existing Windows software on your ARM device, you wouldn't want to. Existing Windows software is designed for mice and keyboards, so 
very precise movements, very small buttons, menus, and so on. When you've got big fat fingers trying to touch them on a screen, it doesn't work. So this legacy of existing software, though very valuable on the desktop, is next to useless on the tablet because it's unusable. So in a world of completely new computing form factors and devices which don't need keyboards or mice, would you need Windows at all? Well, possibly. And the clue is in this. The Motorola Atrix is an Android smartphone with a secret double life. As well as allowing you to play and work on the move, it can also become something bigger. When you need a full-sized screen and keyboard, plug it into its special dock and the phone's second, more fully featured operating system fires up with all your work still open. It's the phone that does all the processing. The screen and the keyboard are simply that. Unplug it at any time and all your work returns to the more portable mode and you can continue on the move. So we can see this future where smartphones are powerful and you carry your computing power with you. You've got it with you all the time. With your documents, your storage, always with you. On the go, you'll have simple interfaces suitable for your fingers. But plug it into a docking station and you'll have a full conventional but capable mouse and keyboard interface. But it'll be the same device, the same operating system, and the same underlying software. When you have that, Windows on ARM starts making a bit of sense. There is speculation that the next version of Windows will have twin interfaces, one for touch and one for the mouse and keyboard. In which case, maybe Microsoft is predicting devices which will run full-form Windows software when in desktop mode and which continue running in a more touch-friendly form on the move. And into the further future, Maybe the tiny devices of the next two decades won't need small touch screens at all. And that means Windows may just go one better than the dinosaurs could and survive.